already tried doing a just a couple edits. Um, I fixed the warmth, made it a little bit warmer. The sun was going down at this time. Um, just brought down the exposure a little bit. Brought up the contrast to give it a little more vibrance. Um, down below, I just did enable profile corrections, move chromatic abrasion, sorry, aberration. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Over here, I have just the crisp and clean precepts from Cole's classroom. Um, I don't use any of that, but usually if I'm doing a wedding, I will uh, use a lot of these. Like my favorites is pure class. Do that a lot for my black and whites. And then um, endless summer is one of mine and then Coachella. So these three, usually I use a lot for um, editing weddings. So do that. All right. And then I'm going to right click my mouse and go to edit in edit in Adobe Photoshop. So that's just going to take my image all the way to Photoshop. Perfect. Okay, guys. So the next thing what I'm going to do is um, over here is where all my toolbars are. And then over here is yours may look a little bit different. Um, like here, I keep all my actions from greater than Gatsby. I don't really use swatches. I don't really use history. I mean, I, I should, but I don't really use any of these. So if I'm editing, um, I usually have my actions open, but I'll just leave the color up. So, all right. So making sure that my background is selected, I'm going to go up here to file. I'm going to go to place embedded. Now I know pe some people have the earlier versions of Photoshop and Photoshop elements. I'm not sure what that is called. Mine says place embedded. I think you can, uh, maybe it's place object. I'm not really sure. So you might have to kind of play around with that. But for Photoshop CC, um, this is what it's called, I believe. So I'm gonna click place embedded. Um, I have my folder already open for my sky overlays. Um, I've shot a couple of these, like all these ones I've shot myself. And then all these in the folders, some of these um, I've actually purchased because I love skies. And so I've made that, I've made that. Um, so yeah. So the one I'm going to choose is the pink and blue sunset, the one that I made. And I'm going to go to place. So that's just going to place that directly onto my image. And it's nice because you have this type, this box, you know. This box allows you to stretch it, move it, do pretty much whatever you would like. So yeah, there's just that. So what I'm gonna do is bring it up, kind of stretch it out, stretch it out a little, just so it looks um, pretty natural. I mean, honestly, this is dramatic. I love doing dramatic skies for wedding portraits. I think it looks stunning, um, but sometimes, for everyday use, you don't need to, but I like it because it's so blown out that with the sky, it just kind of brings the photo all together. So we're just going to move that around. You want to make sure that you get all the edges covered. You don't want to have like a lovely little white line right there. So just try to move the image all the way over just to cover all that. So then I'm going to go over to my box where my layers are. I'm going to go where it says normal, I'm going to click normal, and I'm going to go to multiply. And that right there kind of uh, brings down the opacity, makes it more transparent, but also makes the blending a little bit easier. Um, just looks a little more natural. So over here, you can kind of move it up, see where your subject is, you know, just like that. So I'll move that up. Because as you can see, the mountains are right here. And this, by the way, is in Idaho. We're at the Sawtooth Winery, absolutely stunning. Over here is the Snake River, it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna come up to this top bar and I'm gonna click the arrow, or sorry, check mark. Click that, and there we go. So say you check the, the box and you're like, oh man, I, I actually wanted to bring it up more or stretch it out more. All you have to do is go to Edit, go down to Free Transform, and your box will appear all over again so maybe bring that down just a little more like that. all right so the next thing we're going to do is hit the uh sorry 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask. So we're going to come down to this little box right here where it looks like a little square with the circle in it. We're going to hit that little box. And now what we're going to do, we're going to add a gradient. Um, for me, I find that easier to blend my sky overlays. Some people will use the quick select and will actually select it out. Sometimes for me, it just looks a little too uh, noticeable. So for me, I like to use a gradient. And also another thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to lower the opacity of my sky just because sometimes it can look a little too much. Just because the mountains are blurred in the background and that's another thing you have to, you know, be careful of is um, blurring, making sure if your mountains are blurred, your sky is kind of blurred, you know, it only makes sense. Um, so, and that I can do another tutorial on like how to use like Gaussian blur and stuff like that. So. We're going to come over to the left hand side we're going to click the gradient tool and the gradient I use is this one right here um, foreground to background we're going to use the first square and then make sure your mode is on normal I actually started doing this tutorial and could not for the life of me figure out why my gradient tool was not working I went on to Google and I typed it in gradient tool not working and mine was set to screen so make sure it's set to normal or it won't work or for some reason I just can't get to work so okay so make sure it's normal I do 100% opacity I mean you don't have to just do whatever um, you feel is great for taste so alright guys what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to drag a line and most of the time I, I kinda do this a couple times I'm gonna click my mouse and drag the line down to where my subject is and that's gonna create a gradient as you guys can see, just like that. So I'm like, eh, I don't really like that. So I'm gonna come up here, drag it. There we go. I kinda like that. That way it's off the mountains and just kinda looks a little bit better. But now we have this lovely little harsh line. So what I'm gonna do with that, and because I have my layer mask selected, I'm gonna comb over here, I'm gonna flip my brush to black. And my brush, we're gonna bring down to 100, about 50%. Make sure you have it on brush. <laughs> we'll do 50%. And then we're just gonna kind of brush that off. I wanna get rid of this harsh line, but at the same time, I don't want it too bright because then you're gonna to start to see a halo effect around the mountains. And I actually don't mind that it, you know, I tinted the mountains just a little bit, but I'm just going to get rid of that lovely line. Okay, it just looks so much better. And you see how there's just a natural gradient going up? Um, if I were to go like this, I mean, you kind of start to see the white line, and I just don't like doing that, so. Um, just be a little bit careful. Sometimes you can go a little crazy, and you start to see the white. So I switch it to white. And I'm going to bring down the opacity way because it gets pretty intense. And then I'll just kind of go over here. I mean, it's creating that line again, but it's also creating a halo effect around my uh, subjects. So. Sky overlays are nice, but sometimes it can be a pain in the butt. So I'll do it a little bit nicer this time. Percent. Switch to black. I'm going to lower my brush. It's a little too big. And then just kind of get rid of that line. Sometimes it takes a while, but I mean, I would spend a little bit more time on this usually. But. Okay. So that's kind of that in a nutshell. Um, you can see sometimes the gradient's a little too much. You'll be, you'll get some haloing, um, but you can always go back and fix that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click save and that's going to save it back into Lightroom. So let that save, thumb is done. Okay, so now let's go back into Lightroom. And there you go, see? It's gonna pop up, perfect. 
And so um, because I shoot with a D810, if I were to save it normally, it would, I'm telling you, my files are like 24 megabytes. Um, but if I save it into Lightroom, uh, they usually save about one to two to three megabytes. So that's really nice. Um, so in post, I probably would have gotten rid of that, uh, lovely little dust spot, but that's cause they're the car that was leaving the wedding. So, um, I'm just going to create like a little bit of a, a sunburst effect on this side. So we're going to go over here. Actually, we're going to go to the, um, gradient and we're just going to pull this over. Just because the sun was setting, I just want a little bit of like a warm tone. Maybe bring that up just a little and then kind of have the exposure. Just because I want it to seem like the light, the sun is setting in the background. So, done. And then come over to the radial and make kind of a little sunburst. So, a uh, really cool thing that I discovered is on the radial, you see how like all of a sudden it just, everything went super soft. If you come over to where it says effect and you click on it, you've got teeth whitening, softened skin, iris enhanced, dodge and burn. This is, I, I never even knew that this was even available. So this is really cool if you're using a brush and you're like, oh, I need to whiten some teeth or I need to soften some skin. Uh, this is really cool. So I'm just gonna go up to where it says exposure and I'm going to invert my mask. So it's kind of like a little movable uh, light, beam of light. So I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make sure, I wanna feather it so it looks you know, more natural. I'm gonna make it a little more yellow. Kind of like the sun. There we go, move that up just a little bit. So there you go, it's more of a yellowy color. Um, you can also raise that. I'm just doing a little extreme just so you guys kind of have a uh, just an idea kind of I know it's a little extreme you're like whoa crazy at it but um, yeah it's pretty much that so we'll just do that okay guys um, and that's pretty much how I would go about like my edits for a workflow um, so yeah, just quick video. And if you guys have any questions, just shoot me an email or leave me a comment down below. Thanks. Bye.